All right, hello, apes class. Um, we are talking about marine fisheries. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here is the screen so that you guys can have a couple of, oopsies, a couple of notes to be able to take. Um, so the first thing, um, these are your three objectives for this lecture and also class tomorrow, or class today, I suppose. Um, so I'll let you read those. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start off talking with is the law that um, governs fisheries management in the US. So it's the Manganson stevens Fishery Conservation Management Act, commonly referred to as the MSA. Um, it was enacted in 1976 and amended in 1996. It created eight regional fishery management councils, um, depending on where places are located along the coast. And it focuses on conservation, protecting habitats, reducing bycatch, and rebuilding collapsed fisheries. So um, the main goal of this act is to make sure that the US has viable fisheries for a very long time. So one of the things that is their goal is to reduce bycatch. They define bycatch as fish which are harvested in a fishery, but which are not sold or kept for personal use and includes economic discards and regulatory discards such as term, such term does not include fish released alive under a recreational catch and release fishery management program. So, but this does not include marine mammals or seabirds um, or sea turtles, which are often included in bycatch and so NOAA and the National Marine Fisheries Service um, have redefined bycatch much more succinct as discarded catch of any living marine resource plus unobserved mortality due to an encounter with fishing gear. So this is a much broader definition and encompasses a lot more. Um, and so you might be asking yourself, why should I be worried about bycatch? And so a good reason that you should be concerned about bycatch is that it can result in the extinction or, extinction or um, species being listed as threatened. Uh, if juvenile fish are caught as bycatch, which they often are, so fish that are too small to sell on the market, um, then they that can affect the fish the future of the fishery because you're killing off all of the young that are going to grow up to be your big fish that you want to catch. Um, and so if you don't have any fish that are going to grow, then you're not going to have any fish in the future. Um, and it also impacts many endangered and threatened species. Uh, like a lot of charismatic mammal or charismatic sea creatures like whales and dolphins and seals and sea turtles and that kind of thing. So um, people get kind of upset when you start talking about accidentally killing cute critters that we all like and are attached to. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the different types of methods that are used in commercial fisheries. So first thing we have are trawls. So you have both the bottom trawl and the mid-ocean trawl. Um, the bottom trawl has weights along the very bottom edge and is dragged along the bottom of the sea, a lot of times to pick up shrimp. Um, but this catches many unintended benthic animals and destroys the benthic ecosystem, especially corals. Um, and then we have the mid-ocean trawl, which is a trawl that's dragged in the middle of the water column. Um, so it's not weighted as heavily on the bottom edge. And it's used to catch entire schools of fish. Um, so this would be for schooling fish. It can catch things like seabirds and marine mammals, but that can be pretty easily avoided by just like putting some flagging on the lines that um, go from the, the boat to the trawl. And also just making sure that you're not fishing in areas that marine mammals like to hang out in. Um, but they do have kind of moderate levels of bycatch because of that. So then we have the purse seine. 
um, it's a net, it's deployed, and a little runner boat kind of wraps it around um, a school of fish here, and then the bottom is closed, and then they pull up the fish. Um, and a lot of, and sometimes they have uh, things floating in the middle of where they're going to wrap around to attract the schooling fish. But this also attracts some other animals like sharks um, and other undesirable animals that will end up being bycatch. So this has really high levels of bycatch, um, which can be minimized by not having the aggregator or the little thing in the middle to attract the fish. All right, and then we have a dredge, which is a metal basket that is dragged along the bottom, and it's usually used to pick up sea, uh, sorry, it's usually used to pick up shellfish. Um, and it's very harmful to the benthic ecosystem and habitat. A more sustainable method, um, but more expensive method is diving and actually like picking gill nets. So these are nets that are stretched across large expanses of the ocean, um, either in the middle of the water column or down at the resting on the ground, depending on the kind of fish that you want to catch. And it's a very, very fine net so that the fish can't see it and they swim into it and then they get caught uh, by their gills. And so they can't swim backwards because it'll rip their gills off and they can't swim forward. So they're stuck by their gills. Um, and these nets are deployed and they're left there for quite a long time. And then people come back and pull them up every once in a while and check and see what they've gotten. Um, but this is very, very dangerous to marine mammals and sea turtles because these animals both need to breathe oxygen from the surface. So if they get caught in a net, um, first of all, they're going to start freaking out. So they're going to tangle themselves up more. But then the net is weighted down on the bottom. And so they can't get up to the surface to breathe at all. Um, so these have very high bycatch levels and they're very dangerous to marine mammals. Um, they're big culprits of ghost nets, which are fishing materials that are abandoned and never collected. But if those nets are still there, then they're gonna catch anything that swims along. Um, so this is a big, big hazard. And then we have several different hook and line methods. So the first one is long lining. So it's where you deploy one single line and it hangs horizontally and you put little floaters on it to mark it. Um, and then, and they can bait the hooks or not. And it's usually used for big game fish like swordfish. Um, but it can attract marine mammals, turtles and sharks and this drowns them. Um, so like we said, it keeps them underwater and they can't get away. Then we can have jigging, which is a long vertical line hanging down um, with lots of hooks. And it the line is jerked up and down to catch the fish. Um, and a lot of times it's done at night and it'll have like light lures on it to catch the fish. This is a pretty specific method of fishing and it attracts pretty specific fish um, and it has really low levels of bycatch. And then we have trawling. So we just have all of these vertical long lines um, being trailed behind a fishing boat. Um, they're checked very often, so any unintended catches can be released very quickly, so they have very low bycatch. Um, so it's a pretty environmentally friendly fishing method. And then we have pole and vertical lines. Um, so, or, so two different names, one method. So you just have one long vertical line hanging down, um, and this takes, it's a pretty targeted method because you're only hanging it in an area where you, the fish you want are hanging out. Um, and it requires a fair amount of skill and knowledge for it to be used effectively. So it's pretty difficult to use. So it's not very used more in smaller artisan fisheries. And then we have pots and traps, which we use for things like crabs and lobsters. And these are just wire baskets that are dropped down on the ocean floor, um, used to catch crustaceans. They can have a little escape door here uh, that can let fish or animals that are undersized uh, escape. And it can also let unintended uh, bycatch escape too. So there's very small environmental concerns associated with that. 
So the last thing we're going to talk about is fishing down the food web. So fishing down the food web is when large, long-lived species are targets for fishing first. So these animals, we're talking about like tuna and grouper, which grow to be like four and 500 pounds. These are enormous fish. Um, so they take a really long time to reproduce and mature. And so we frequently remove them faster than they can reproduce and mature. And so once it becomes economically disadvantaged to fish those very large species like cod, um, we move on down to the next largest species and then so on and so forth. And this also works the same um, with fishing effort. So once we fish out, overfish a lot of fish that live in the um, upper layers of the water column, like the, the photic zone, um, we start to go down deeper and deeper into the ocean and extend more fishing effort, which is how we get crazy looking fish, like this orange ruffy, which is a deep sea animal. So it takes a lot of effort to catch that animal. Um, so this has the fishing down the food web has resulted in a depletion of a lot of fisheries, including the Atlantic cod. Um, there are still Atlantic cod around, but there are speculations that that fishery will never ever recover to levels where it will be sustainable for us to fish from it again. Um, the Atlantic sturgeon, a lot of salmon, um, bluefin tuna, all of these animals, they're very large predatory fish. Um, and they have been fished to near extinction. Mm. 